Welcome back to Life with the Walkers. Today we're going to be making blackberry jelly. And for the past couple of months, we have been walking and near our house along the road were some wild blackberries. So every time that we would go, I would take me a little Ziploc bag and then I would fill it up with some blackberries and then I would pop them in the freezer. Because you're going to need about probably five to six cups of fresh blackberries with this. I don't usually um, measure how many berries that I have. So I can't really be precise. I just take what I have and I make it work for me. So today we've got about two gallons of blackberries picked and that is going to be way more than we need for one making a blackberry jelly. So what I'll do is I will make the juice and then I will make probably two batches of blackberry jelly and then possibly you can freeze the juice. I do that sometimes to make more later or you can save it and um, freeze popsicles with it, add a little bit of natural sweetener. You can do anything with the juice. So pretty much just take what you have and make, make it work because if you have about five to six cups of blackberries, you can make blackberry jelly. So this video is gonna be self-explanatory to show you how easy it is to make jelly. So I've placed all of my blackberries into my pot and covered them in water. And now I'm gonna bring them up to a rolling boil and then I'm gonna let them cook in the water for probably 45 minutes and then turn them off. And then you wanna let that sit for a little while. And the best thing about making jelly is you can start to make your juice and then let it sit. And the longer that you let it sit, the more flavor from the fruit that the juice is gonna have. So it's a great thing, especially if you have a lot going on like we do. With three kids running around, I don't ever get to start a project and actually finish it in one um, effort, like one making of it. So I'm gonna, I turn these on and I'm gonna let them come to a rolling boil. And then um, whenever it's cool, then we will strain it and get the juice out. Um, I know that you can make uh, preserves and jam but we prefer the jelly because my kids don't like the seeds. So I'm gonna show you how to strain that really well to get all of the juice out of it to turn into jelly. Now that my blackberries have cooked in the water, I covered them with the water and let them boil for probably 45 minutes and full, like good boil. And then I turned it down to a simmer for another 30. Then I turned the heat off and I let it sit there. Now it's not completely cooled. Although if you wanted to do this, whenever it's cooled, you can. I just like to go ahead and strain it while it's still a little warm. But how I strain it is I just have a strainer and then a large bowl underneath. And then I'm going to lay my clean dishcloth on top and then pour everything through it. Now, this is my versatile dishcloth that I strain everything with and it always comes clean. I can't believe how it can be dyed red from beets and then I'll throw it in the washing machine, no bleach, and it comes out white every time. So this is my go-to for straining anything. I know a lot of people use cheesecloth and that's perfectly fine. I have just found that to get a clearer jelly, to use more, um, is thicker than cheesecloth, so it strains everything better. So this is what I use, and it works for me. You use whatever you have around, but like I said, I continually use this, and I keep it clean and washed. That way it's ready to go. That way I'm not throwing out the cheesecloth. My daddy, whenever he used to make blackberry jelly, he would use a pair of pantyhose and they were clean, but he uses the pair of pantyhose to strain the blackberries out and it turned out great. But for me, the dishcloth works. So I'm gonna get this juice strained and set it aside while I'm making sure that my jars are ready for um, whenever the jelly gets time to put that in there. Thank you. 
So I've gotten all the blackberries poured in and I almost had too much for this bowl, but um, I just wanted to get it done in one go instead of swapping out bowls. But I'm gonna pull up the sides of my cheesecloth and then squeeze it and press it with my potato masher just to get all the extra juice out. And I might can um, transfer it to another bowl to do that since this one's about overflowing. But depending on how many blackberries that you have um, will determine um, how big of a bowl you need. Now I'm just gonna lift the sides very carefully not to let any of my blackberry pulp, the blackberries themselves get anywhere through that. And since this has got so much in it, I'm just gonna carefully take this and put it in another bowl with my strainer through there, even though I probably don't need the strainer, but that's just an extra measure of caution. And I'm just gonna let this sit just like this and you can hear it, it's dripping on its own down in there. But this should, oh, it's really hot. This should um, be enough to make probably two or three batches of jelly. So I'm really excited because we really love blackberry jelly. Now, this is extremely messy. As you can see on my countertop where that bowl was, I mean, the juice is just, this blackberry juice is probably more potent, believe it or not, than the beets. Because I just got through doing the beets the other day and the beets stuff kind of wiped up really good and it didn't really spread everywhere. So the blackberries tend to make a mess. So go ahead and prepare that you're gonna have red juice everywhere, but that's okay, because we can get it out. So for the rest of my juice, um, as you can see, it's in my cloth. All the pulp is in there. And since it's still hot, I am probably not going to be able to squeeze this as good as if I had, if I were to have let it cool. But the easy thing that you can do if you're just in a pinch and you're really trying to get it done is you can take the excess cloth at the top and just slowly twist it so that um, you're putting, you know, a tightness onto your fabric. Now, the one thing with this and or cheesecloth, whenever you're trying to squeeze the juice out of the pulp, you don't want to squeeze it too hard, too fast, because the pulp will come through. And if you have pulp that comes through, that will make your jelly less clear. It will not affect the taste of it, but it will make it a little less clear. So for all of my jelly recipes, I use a box of Sure Gel Fruit Pectin, and it just makes it easier to do this. I know that you can make it by your pectin or do it naturally a different way, but this makes it easy and almost always it's gonna set perfectly. But I follow the instructions for jelly, which are located inside of the box, a neat little um, packet that tells you everything that you need to know. Sometimes if you're making, um, jelly the exact recipe for the type of berry or fruit that you're using won't be on here but if you know of a different type of fruit that's similar you just go by that so the first thing that we're going to do is we have our four and a half cups of fruit juice from our blackberries strained and it's in the pot 
And you're, we're gonna add to that a teaspoon of butter. Now the reason why you wanna add a teaspoon of butter is it helps to keep down the foaming of your jelly whenever it's um, boiling because if it has more foam, that's just more work that you have to skim off because you want your jelly to be extremely clear. So add that teaspoon of butter, or if you can't do dairy, there are a lot of good um, vegan butters out there that are plant-based, you can use those. So I'm just gonna take the packet of fruit pectin. It's just the pectin that's in the box. And I've had several people ask before how many grams of pectin is my box to another one? And it's 49 grams or 1.75 ounces. So um, that's just to give you an idea of how much pectin that I'm using. But I'm just gonna turn my eye on and add the fruit pectin in and then dissolve it. And then I'm gonna bring all of this to a full rolling boil, a boil that does not go down whenever I'm stirring. And then after it gets to that point, then we'll add our sugar. So my juice is almost to a full rolling boil. I added the pectin and the butter, and I don't know if you can see because of the steam, that the boil is barely um, going down as I um, you can see it without stirring it. It's pretty, pretty, pretty high boil. And then as I'm stirring it, it isn't going to go down. So I'm gonna add that six and a half cups of sugar to my fruit juice and pectin mixture, and it will immediately um, stop that boil. Now we're gonna stir all of that sugar into the juice and get it completely dissolved. And then we're gonna bring it back up to another full rolling boil, and then you're gonna constantly stir it for one minute and then it'll be time to pour it into our jars. Okay. okay, we got it back up to a full rolling boil. And this one you want to be really careful with. You want it to start, you've got to stir it constantly so it won't over, um, it boil over as I've done before. So learn from my experience. You may even have to turn your heat down. As you can tell, mine's getting a little bit too um, high for my comfort. So if you have a bigger pot, obviously that won't be a problem. But I've turned my heat down to medium and just constantly stir this for one to two minutes. The Sure Gel says to stir for one minute. I always go for two. It helps it set better, um, but if you want a thinner jelly, then just stir it for exactly one minute. But be very careful as you're stirring it that you don't slosh it over or you're gonna have burned sugar smell all in your kitchen. So we're gonna continue stirring this for about one more minute. It's been about 30 seconds, so we're gonna give it about a minute and a half. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is turn the heat completely off, and in order to make sure that my jars are ready, I'll just push this off of that hot eye and just let it sit there because um, you wanna just plant safe, you don't wanna get burned, so just shove it off and you see how the boil went down just like immediately. So we're gonna let it sit for just a second, and you can already tell that some of that minimum foam is coming to the top, and the longer you let it sit for just like maybe two minutes, that foam will come up to the top and then we're gonna scrape it off so that it won't go into our jars. Okay, so we let it sit for about a minute and we're just gonna lightly scrape that foam off the top. Now it's okay if you have some foam. Um, if we had not used the butter, it probably would have been a whole lot more foam on the top, but just try to scrape it around with a spatula and empty it into a bowl. It makes for a nice little um, candied little blackberry treat when it starts to cool. 
So we're just gonna scrape a little bit of that foam off just to help it not be put into our jelly jars. All right, so now I'm gonna put the juice, the jelly into our jars and put the lids and the rings on them and place them in our water bath. And then once we get them all, we will put them down into the water bath to process them. So I processed the jelly in my water bath for roughly eight to 10 minutes. Depending on your elevation, you just wanna check the Sure Gel instructions and it will tell you exactly for where you're located, um, how long to process them. So they processed and then I pulled them out and I'm letting them sit on the counter until they seal completely and cool. You don't wanna mess with them and you'll hear the little tink tink sound as they start to pop and then you know that it is sealed. But after they've completely cool, you can check each of the, the lids and if it's bubbled up in the middle, it means that it didn't set because you can mash it down and it pops. That means that you need to refrigerate it or you can try to seal it again, but just pop it in the refrigerator. More than likely, they're all gonna set. But, um, but at the beginning, I had two utensils that I find that are very, very helpful to have, almost needed, they're necessary, and that is a funnel to dip your um, jelly into your jars. Uh, you can get different brands. This is just the ball that came, the ball brand that came with the little utensil kit, and then the tongs. These tongs are really, really necessary whenever you're getting the jars out of the hot water. It just makes it so much easier and it fits perfectly around wide mouth jars and regular mouth jars. So you're gonna want these two things. I know that there are other utensils that come with it, like the little magnet to pull your lids out of the water and the, um, the measure around the top. I just base mine upon where the lid, the, the um, top of your jar ends is how far I put it. These were some that I did yesterday and they have set perfectly. Once your jars have cooled, you can take it and turn it to the side and you can see if the jelly set more than likely. I know I keep saying that because there is always a chance that yours may not, but more than likely, if you follow the instructions in the Sure Gel packet and what I've told you here today, um, it will set. And you see the jelly is um, nice and formed. 
So it takes about 24 hours for it to cool, but you don't want to mess with the ones that you've just pulled out until they've completely cooled. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Um, give me a comment below if you've made this jelly before or whatever jelly you like to make and maybe a way that you like to do it, maybe with less sugar or um, with preserves. We don't tend to do that because mine like jelly better. So I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching.